Hey everybody. Today we're opening up our studio for the first time. We're going to run through some of the basic functionality and just generally start building a little bit of comfort working in this environment. There's a lot going on when you first open up our studio. There's at least three different panes. We're going to focus almost entirely in this video on the console tab in the leftmost pane. I'll mention the other ones a little bit as we go through, but mostly that'll be saved for future videos. So first of all, R is giving you a scientific calculator, and it will recognize all of your basic arithmetic operations. For example, 8 plus 12 is 20. Two quick comments on that. First of all, that one in brackets, let's just ignore for the moment. I'll talk about that a little bit later in this video. The answer here is just 20. Second of all, notice that I put spaces between the 8 and the plus, and the plus and the 12. That's just for legibility. R will ignore spaces like this when you type them in on this command line. Um, there are many, many built-in functions in R, like, for example, the square root function. The square root of 9 is 3. Um, you can do trig operations, absolute value, and so on. Um, generally, the name of the function will be your first guess. Absolute value is ABS, for example. And if it's not, a quick Google search will get it for you. Um, another thing that's nice about RStudio is that if you use the up arrow, you will get the previous command, and then you can go back and edit it. So, for example, if I want the square root of 10, I'm going to do the up arrow, backspace, and then type in 10 where the 9 was to get about 3.162278. So by default, R is giving me six digits of accuracy to the right of the decimal point here. You can adjust that under the preferences menu. The next thing that we want to do is to define a variable. So let's use the traditional name x and let's just let it equal 3. So um, the assignment operator in R is a left arrow, a less than or equal to sign, I'm sorry, a less than sign followed by a dash. You can also use an equal sign, but there's more advanced reasons why we don't tend to do that. I encourage you to just use that arrow to do assignments. Notice in the upper right hand pane, the environment tab now shows an X equal to three, just to remind us that we've made that assignment. If we now type the name of the variable, R will print out its value. And we can do all of those same arithmetic operations using x. 3 plus x, for example, is 6. By the way, R will respect order of operations. So for example, 1 plus 2 times x is going to be 7 rather than 9. R begins to get more powerful when we start assigning variables to be not just individual values, but vectors. Here's what I mean. Let's assign y to be the vector 1, 5, 6, 9. And then let, and then type y and hit enter to see what it is. So y is now assigned to be a string of values, four values in particular, 1, 5, 6, 9, in that order. We can also see this in the environment pane on the upper right. The code to let R know that I was going to key in values in a vector was C parenthesis, short for concatenate. Now we have this object y, and we can do arithmetic operations with it. For example, y plus 2. R is going through each position in y and adding 2 to every single one. We can also do those other functions that we talked about before, things like square root of y. Now r is going through each of those four positions and applying the square root. Let's see here. We can do things that will sort of summarize the vectors. We can get the median, for example, of y, 5.5, or the sum of y. Again, there's a great um, number of functions available to you. Many of them have obvious names. Others you will just Google to find out what the exact syntax is. Two additional things I want to point out before moving on. First of all, notice this history tab up here. 
If we click on that, we're going to see um, the most recent commands that we've used, and you can scroll up and down to get even more. Um, this will persist even between sessions. If you quit and then come back to our studio, the commands you did in that last session will still be there. Now, if I double click one of those commands, the command will come back up in my console and I can reevaluate it. So that's potentially a time saver. Um, the other thing that I want to mention is that we can give variables names that consist of more than one letter. For example, let's say numbers is equal to 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then we can do all our usual things. We can take the square root of numbers and so on. Great. The other thing that I want to accomplish in this video is to load in a data set and start getting a feel for some of the things that we can do once we have loaded in a data set. So I'm looking at this lower right hand pane now in my RStudio um, window. It's essentially just a file browser. And so you can see my home directory. I'm going to go to my Dropbox and my stats class. And then somewhere down here, I have a folder of data sets that I've started. So um, these are a couple of data sets that I've taken from Triola's introductory statistics book and the data sets that are provided with it. I'm going to go to the body data set and just click it and then go to import data set. When we're first getting started, we can ignore all of these options and just go to import. Two things will happen. First of all, we'll get a preview of the spreadsheet we just imported. Um, second of all, in the upper right, we'll see in the environment pane that we now have an object called body data that consists of 300 observations of 15 variables. That means that this is a data frame that has 300 rows and 15 columns. Um, and so we can do sorting by just clicking on things. We can scan to the left and right and essentially just treat it as if it were an Excel file. However, there are a lot of very powerful things that we can do from the console, tab, um, the console pane down here in the lower left. I want to show one or two of those. So let's say that we're interested in just ages. So we're going to let R know that we're interested in the body data set by typing body underscore data, the, just the name of the set. Notice that R Studio made a suggestion as soon as I got to about three letters in. I hit enter so that I didn't have to type all of body underscore data. Okay, so that's the data frame. Now I want to specify just the age variable. In R, we do that with a dollar sign. This lets R know, now we're going to specify a variable. It's pulling up a selection, a list of possible selections for us. I want age. Now if I hit enter, R is going to give me a list of all the ages in this data set in order. First 43, then 57, then 38. 43, 57, 38. Now these numbers in brackets are actually um, useful. The 1 is letting us know that 43 is the first value in this vector. The 22 is letting us know that 23 is the 22nd value in the vector. There we can see it. The 43 tells us that 30 is the 43rd. And so on. So now we can play with body underscore data dollar age just in the same way we did with um, x and y earlier. It's just a new variable that we can do anything we want with. Let's use the up arrow to get back to this variable, body underscore data dollar age, and let's find the mean of it. So the average age of all the individuals in this data set is going to be 47.04. Obviously, there are a great many things that we can do with individual columns in this data set. We could find the standard deviation, the median, the sum, the minimum, maximum, and so on. We'll get a lot more in depth into that kind of thing in future videos.